Welcome to Spotlight on Frazee. I'm your host, Hank Ledke, and today we're talking about the sesquicentennial. In 2008, the state of Minnesota celebrated a 150th anniversary birthday, and a local group of people uh, did an early Pioneer's Day out in Hubble Pond. Joanne Splunskowski and her friends spent time developing a pioneer retreat out there at Hubble Pond. And you're going to be looking at pictures of how this w went and people in period costumes talking about the old logging days uh, along the Otter Tail River. And so this should be very interesting for you to see what these people went and did for the sesquicentennial. Logging would start, if they, the lumberjacks actually cut trees during the winter because it was easier for the horses to skid out trees on frozen roads. So what they would actually do is take a cart and go through and put water over the, ro the, the roads that they had built and make ice overnight so that the sleds could pull the trees through. Then they would take them to a lake such as Height of Land Lake and all through the winter, once the ice froze, they'd put those logs, just roll them down onto the, the ice of the lake. Then in the spring, as the, la the ice began to thaw, those logs would start to, to move on through. So they'd go through the dam at Height of Land Dam, and they'd come down here, and how, why it's Hubble Pond Dam is because the logs would pond here, or stop right here. They would control the flow of the logs. Overnight the logs would build up as would the water because they'd shut down the dam and then in the morning they would open up the dam and let so many logs go through for the day and those logs would then go on down to the Frazee Sawmill or on to Fergus Falls or out to the Red River and back up to Winnipeg depending on what, whose logs they were and where they were, which way they were going. And so the river pigs, as they were called, or the loggers who would ride with the logs, they would follow along in a boat called a bateau. And they basically would stay in the boat unless there was a problem, like if they got to a bend of a river and the logs would start to jam up. Then the, the river pigs, as they were called, would get out with their cork boots that have little spikes on the bottom of them and walk the logs to help unjam the logs that would be going through. So it was a very dangerous job and most of them stayed wet all day long because if anybody has seen the Otter Tail River, there's quite a few turns and bends in it. It, all, it wasn't just a straight highway. So they would go to bed most of the time wet and get up and put on frozen pants the next morning too. So the last logs that went through Hubble Pond were, was in 1919 on their way down to the Frazee Sawmill. So that's about when the timber played out in this area anyway. And like I said, they start the Hubble Pond Dam picture that we have the bet, closest estimation was the late 1800s, early 1900s. So there was at least 20 year span there, you know, that this area right here was very active. Hubble Pond Wildlife Management Area was established in 1954 and has had a resident manager living here on this site since 1954 and until about 1983. The Hubble Pond Dam was a logging site, a logging dam, uh, wherein the loggers um, staged their, their, carry, their sending of logs down the river to the sawmills at Frazee and beyond. Initially, before the Frazee sawmill came into effect, they went all the way to Winnipeg with these logs. And, uh, now, Hubble Pond Wildlife Management Area is a 2,400-acre wildlife management area that is open to public hunting and trapping. And uh, trapping is by special permits because we have a lot of people that want to trap many years. It is also open to uh, hiking, skiing, uh, bird watching, harvesting of things like uh, fruits, 
and nuts, mushrooms, and also uh, wild rice within the area that is open to the public. Part of the refuge, part of this wildlife management area is closed to trespass, primarily for the purpose of, of uh, waterfall feeding and resting during the hunting season, during the migration time. So that's why we have a no trespass sanctuary and commercial activities are not permitted on the state wildlife management areas. So tubing, as done and promoted by the commercial interests, is not permitted on this part of the river. Um, other than that, Hubble Pond is a great um, natural resource, uh, 2,400 acres of which about uh, 300, maybe 400 acres are closed to trespass, so there's another 2,000 acres that are open to public use. The dam that's here now was built in 1957, and it is deteriorating now so that we will, we plan to replace this dam within the next, well, I'm hoping before this winter. But this dam functions two purposes. Number one, it provides water level management for the benefit of wild rice. Our purpose to manage it is to manage it for wild rice production so that it provides good waterfowl and other wildlife foods, uh, especially in late summer during the migration and in the spring migration as well. But it also forms a fish barrier. We know that carp have come up in the Otter Tail River as far as Frazee, and we do not want to see carp get, European carp, get up into Tamarack Refuge or height of land or this Hubble Pond Wildlife Area. So it is being maintained as a fish barrier with the new structure as well as this structure. And uh, of course throughout the Red River Basin, throughout the Red River Watershed, the DNR and other agencies are working hard to restore fish migration, uh, especially for fish like the sturgeon that need to be able to move up the river into the lakes and spawn up river and then to travel down river all the way to Hudson Bay and back again if possible. So, uh, but this one will not be, probably will never be opened up because of the carp, the carp problem. And uh, we don't want to see that happen. Thanks for tuning in to the Susquecentennial event this week and there'll be another segment next week on TV3. Thank you.